The Global Observatory team, represented by Jose Maria Figueres Olson, Concordia 21, Christensen Global Strategies, and the Mission Point Capital, have made a commitment to enable governments to reach agreement in Copenhagen to mitigate climate change to put the world on a course of greater ecological and economic stability. To many of us around the world, there is no doubt that in climate change, we are facing the most important battle with respect to the future of humankind on our planet. It's the melting of the glaciers and the in Himalayas. This is not a left issue or a right issue. This is a global issue, and it's all about our future. Which will affect the water supply and the dry seasons for some two billion people. We see the effects in our daily work in communities where water supplies are being reduced, drought cycles are being reduced. We have fires in California. We have floods in West Africa, we have floods in Asia. Something dramatic is changing in our environment. We don't necessarily fully understand what it is, but we know something's changing and we're having to change with it. And the possibilities of very difficult situations arising if we don't take action. We've got to act now. The fact is that we're asking countries to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions 20 or 30 percent in the next decade and 80 percent by 2050. And each individual can reduce his or her own carbon footprint that much in a matter of days. And it's not just governments or the private sector companies, it's all of us in the lifestyle that we have uh, become used to but will have to change. Simple things like not boiling more water than you need when you're going to have a cup of tea. All of those simple things can actually cut your carbon footprint the same amount that we're asking entire countries to cut theirs. It's crucial to get a good agreement and an effective agreement in Copenhagen because we have very little time left in which we have to ensure that emissions of greenhouse gases globally start declining. And therefore, if we don't get a good agreement in Copenhagen, then we're only postponing the problem and therefore making it more difficult. This is an urgent justice issue, a moral issue, a values issue. It's all about who we are and how we're going to survive this century. Copenhagen becomes this cornerstone of how we're going to invent our future, how we're going to invest in our future. This is really a matter of life and death. So it is extremely important for governments and for the people of the world to be on the right side. Reaching an agreement at Copenhagen is too fundamental to our livelihoods and our future to be left in the hands of the negotiators by themselves. A future with limited resources, including limited air quality and uh, water quality and so forth, are all tied up in the outcome of the decisions that will be made at Copenhagen. We must get agreement now, hopefully in Copenhagen, a binding agreement, and it must make sure that we stay below two degrees centigrade. I have grandchildren who will be in their 40s in 2050. Will they have a world? It's as serious as that. The Global Observatory will help the public understand what's happening in Copenhagen inside the global climate change negotiations. Them to participate in the decision-making process in a way which has never before been tried. I think it's essential to create the political space whereby leaders can really start taking the right decisions because let's face it, we really have to bring about a major change from business as usual. If you, the citizens, put pressure on your leaders, then we will see the leaders uh, in Copenhagen react more cooperatively. I've worked on climate change for nearly two decades, and in that time I've worked at a bilateral and a multilateral basis on climate change and energy issues, and the public must be engaged to enable our governmental leaders to take more aggressive action on this issue. And leaders, understandably, are not going to take risks unless they have the political space. We hope to achieve the political space for leaders around the world and their representative negotiators in Copenhagen to achieve a high quality agreement. The Global Observatory is absolutely crucial to getting the right kind of a deal in Copenhagen and more importantly the implementation of any deal going beyond Copenhagen. 
The term black box is used in the aviation industry to represent the box in which everything that is happening in a flight is recorded. The problem is that we don't know what is being recorded, just as we would not know what is happening within the negotiating process at Copenhagen. Therefore, the Global Observatory will establish itself as a white box, as the focal point where what's happening in the negotiating process is being interpreted in real time and is being disseminated through the media to every part of the world for people to be informed and empowered for their decision-making process. And what the Global Observatory is doing is opening up what's happening inside of the black box and communicating it to the public so that they understand and can get involved and make an impact on this issue. To contribute actively, as we all should, to the process of Copenhagen and to making it a success. So we have experts doing real-time analysis of what's happening in the government negotiations in Copenhagen and translating what does that mean for each of us. This Global Observatory can really create that political space. The great thing about the Global Observatory is that it is uh, you know, reaching out to the public on a, on a global basis um, to try to give our political leaders the willpower uh, to do what um, they should know is right. I think the Global Observatory is a very uh, useful initiative. It's a timely initiative and it's something which I think can make a difference. As a former president of my country, Costa Rica, I know only too well how important it is to have good political support behind the decisions that must be made. And as Gandhi always said, be the change you want to see in the world. In other words, uh, we have to back up our uh, words with action.